Hello everyone. I am Sangam Giru Swami and I welcome you all to this program. So title for today's talk is Introduction to Genetics and Genomics. Before jumping directly into these two topics, we'll start with some basics of biological system. So human body is a biological system which is made up of different organs and tissues and these organs and tissues are made up of cells. And the cell is the reason these organs and tissues are different in their structure and function. So the protein composition inside the cell regulates the structure and function of a cell. So key component in determining structure and function of a cell. And this protein is regulated inside a cellular compartment called nucleus. And inside nucleus, we have nucleic acid, which regulates protein synthesis. And uh, this nucleic acid is usually present in the form of threads. And that too, inside this nucleic acid, we see there are some active segments of nucleic acid, which are called genes, which are actively or directly responsible for protein synthesis. And these genes are made up of DNA molecules. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So if we'll see it again, so in this nucleus, we have nucleic acid component and one copy of complete nucleic acid component is called genome. And when we study about the genome, it's called genomics. While for gene, when we study about the genes, structure, function, composition, and how it passes through different generation, it is called genetics. To understand this organization better, we'll go to next slide. So nuclear organization. Here we have a cell with nucleus, and in nucleus usually these nucleic acids are present in the form of threads, but at particular stage, these are present in a very compact form, which is called chromosome, and uh, Chromosome is made up of relatively less compact form of uh, the thread, which is chromatin, and chromatin is made up of DNA helixes. And of course, DNA helix is made up of DNA molecules. So basically, we have four different types of DNA molecules A, T, G, C adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. So these DNAs are present in the form of pairs with their complementary nucleotides. A pairs with T, T pairs with A, G pairs with C, and C pairs with G. So different sequences, a particular sequence of these DNAs make genes, and these genes lead to the synthesis of protein. Now, how this protein is used for, DNA is used for protein synthesis, we'll see in the next slide. So it is called the central dogma or the central hypothesis, which almost all the biological system has to follow, in which a double standard DNA leads to the synthesis of RNA, single standard RNA, which leads to the synthesis of protein. So the, this DNA is a, a code or instruction for protein synthesis, and it replicates or it makes its own copy to keep this code intact or sustained and the process is known as replication when rna is synthesized from dna sequence it's called transcription and when protein is synthesized from rna it's called translation to understand in a different way so let's say we have uh, this code for particular product or protein so this code cannot be used directly for protein synthesis or product synthesis. So this code or this script has to be changed into some other script which can be read by us or the system. So here, for example, this is decoded into D, this step is decoded into O, and this one is decoded into G. So now the script has been changed and now we have decoded the message, which is dog. And this process of changing script is called transcription but the job is still not done we just have the message the product has not been synthesized 
until ls we do the last step which is translation so now this code has been decoded sl is translated here in the form of product so now we know this code is very important and any change in this code may lead to a change in the message so this change will lead to change in this message and the outcome will also be different so outcome can be anything this can be positive this can be negative or this won't change at all and this change is called mutation so with this please requisite knowledge we'll go to the next section which is introduction to genetics so again genetics is the study of structure function and expression of genes and how a gene passes through different generations its hereditary characteristics we'll start with the father of genetics the father of modern genetics gregor john mendel he was an austrian monk who was very curious about the nature so he observed a pea plant and saw uh, pea plants have different characteristics like some peas are green in color some are yellow some are tall some are dwarf so he wanted to know what are the regulators or what is the key feature which regulates all these different traits so he studied and uh, after that he found out some key uh, findings and uh, he said that these different traits are the result of factors so this factor is now known as gene so he says factors are responsible for traits such as height color and other features of the pea plant then he studied more and then he found out that there is not just one factor responsible for this phenotypic outcome or traits there are different forms of these factors or different versions of these factors which we call as allele now we will see his two uh, main findings which he mm, he composed it in the form of laws the first one is principle of segregation so to understand principle of segregation so it says that a parent gives just one allele for a gene to each gamete they produce so a parent has two alleles but what gamete formation it gives just one allele so here you see and based on alleles dominance you will see the outcome in the offspring so in the first case you see capital g capital g with green p and the second one second parent is small g small g with yellow peas so after hybridization and different four possible gamete formation so there are capital g capital g small g capital g small g you see in all these cases and in all these cases you see green p is offspring because this factor or this allele is dominant in nature so even if one allele, allele is present in gamete it will lead to the phenotype of this particular alleles then uh, the other one is law of independent assortment so he says that during gamete formation different pairs of alleles segregate independently of each other which you can see here in multifactorial characteristics where you see a green p with smooth border and yellow p with wrinkled border so one allele from each factor will come and uh, there will be hybridization and uh, this one of capital this heterozygous genotype and after selfing of this this two the outcome phenotypic outcome this year will be and so there are 16 different outcomes for that this will be 
nine outcome will be green smooth border p three green wrinkled border p and three yellow smooth border p and one wrinkled yellow border p just to understand the same concept here in human context so we take a mutation which is responsible for disease the first one we have is dominant inheritance the second one is recessive inheritance in case of dominant inheritance we see that presence of even one mutated gene or one mutated allele is enough to cause the disease phenotype or to affect the person so here we have one unaffected parent and one affected parent so after hybridization so there is possibility of four different type of genotypes from these two parents so the first two genotypes are the allele from each parent but all are normal so these are unaffected children or offspring but in the other two cases so there is one allele of mutated gene in each of this offspring and this will lead to disease phenotype or these children are affected with the geno disease phenotype and huntington's disease is a very common example for dominant inheritance now we'll see autosomal recessive inheritance here in this case presence of one mutated gene is not enough to cause a disease phenotype this will be just in the form of carrier so when there are two parents one with unaffected genotype or phenotype and the other with carrier having one mutated allele so here we see four different probability of genotypes so first two are unaffected children because both carries normal allele from both the parents but the other two carries one mutant allele from this carrier carrier parent and this leads to the heterozygous state and these children or offsprings are not affected and sickle cell disease is very common example of recessive inheritance in order to see disease phenotype a offspring or a person has to have both the alleles mutated for the same gene now after this just to get example of genetics so when we have any change in our dna molecule this may be called mutation or variation this may lead to some drastic changes in context of disease like sickle cell disease where we see a wild type as a very healthy biconcave rbcs but in case of mutant we see some sickled or abnormal form of rbcs which leads to a disease phenotype so this was the result of just one nucleotide chain but there are some other characteristics or feature which are multi factorial multi gene regulated outcomes like color height of body structure of a person is uh, governed by multi factorial genes so this is also part of genetics now after summarizing genetics we will start with genomics so genomics we know that this is a study about genome and genome is a complete nucleic acid inside the cell and it includes genes as well to understand this so from one cell uh, when we measure of a total nucleic acid length it comes around 3 billion base pairs this is just one copy and we have two copies of it so just to visualize how long our genome is and if you take uh, an average person and join all the genome content end to end and you try 
to make it one single thread this can go from earth to moon and come back 1500 times so it's very fascinating to know that we have this much of information or this much of genomic content stored efficiently inside of a biological system and we have two copies of each genome and this genome is not just a single thread this genome has 23 parts and each of them is called chromosome so we have 22 common chromosome but especially but in case of male we have one copy of x one copy of y in case of female we have two copy of x so we have this in two copies and that is called diploid now to understand the genome size in different organisms let's compare it so here we see let's start with the largest one so camellia japanese camellia is a plant which has 149 billion base pair as a genome while human has 3 billion base pair mouse has 2.9 billion base pair and elephant has 3.3 billion base pair dogs have 2.5 billion base pair and ants have 500 million base pairs bacteria has 5 million base pair and virus has 0.1 million base pair now after understanding the basic genomic structure and size now we needed to know the complete ATGC sequence of our genome. To do that, there was a project called Human Genome Project and uh, the Human Genome Project was an international scientific research project with the goal of determining the base pairs that make up human DNA and of identifying, mapping and sequencing all of the genes of the human genome from both a physical and a functional standpoint and it remains the world's largest collaborative biological project so for this project across the world six countries us uk japan france germany and china with 20 different institutions participated to complete this project and this project was started in october 1990 and uh, by april 2003 this project was completed so it took a long 13 years to complete human genome sequencing and it costed 3 billion us dollar and if you want to uh, visualize this amount of money you can buy 10000 ferrari cars with the same amount of money they spent on in 2000 year 2000 but now in 2022 it only cost 1000 us dollar to sequence a human genome which is equivalent to cost of an iphone so technologically we have made so much advancement that we have reduced cost significantly that now this price is affordable and this can be very efficiently or effectively used for application in medical research and scientific researches after this human gene project there were few key points or key findings from this project which are uh, earlier uh, we did not know how much component of our total human genome is responsible for protein synthesis so after this project we came to know that there are approximately 22,300 protein coding genes in the genome, which are this here in this schematic. And we have only 3% or less than 3% of our whole genome, which is directly involved in protein synthesis. So rest 97% part, here you can say, this 97% parts are not involved directly in protein synthesis and the function of this nucleic acid components which we are still trying to find out and for now these 
fragments or this part of genome is called junk DNA. And uh, we also found out that this intergenic region has so many copies in between these genes which were discovered after human genome sequencing. So after all this finding, now we have complete sequence of our human genome and this information can be used for our medical purpose and research purposes. Now, after all this uh, genetics and genomics uh, subject, we'll summarize this in one final slide, which is genetics versus genomics. So genetics is about the study of heredity, passing gene from one generation to other, while genomics is a study of complete genome, including genes. In genetics, gene refers to a specific sequence of DNA on a single chromosome. It has a very small segment of uh, DNA, which you can see from here. These circled ones are genes. While genome refers to a single copy of complete nuclear nucleic acid con content. So it includes everything, genes and other intergenic region. Then genetics involves study of function and composition of a single gene. While in genomics, it involves the study of all genomic components and their interrelationships. So I hope uh, every point is clear. Okay, so this is the last slide. So here we, as we have summarized genetics and genomics. Thank you so much.